Um, and this is because we'll, we recorded the, the uh, webinar that took place on, on Friday. And then we'll upload these, or the best one, to uh, GWP's YouTube channel, or um, we'll send out a link where you can download it and share with colleagues um, who weren't able to be present for the webinar. All right, so with that, I will begin. Um, let's see. All right, so. Just to start, uh, most of you know all this already, but uh, just a brief introduction of what are the SDGs. Um, and the Sustainable Development Goals are the, the next version, uh, the next of 15 years of the development agenda of the United Nations. Uh, these are built off the Millennium Development Goals, which took place until 2015. Um, yet they're much more expansive than in, in depth than the MDGs. Uh, the goal of the SDGs is that they're to be transformative and integrated, uh, an integrated sustainable development agenda. So you see much more crossover between the different uh, thematic areas. And the idea is that they're supposed to be mutual reinforcing for, for one another. Whereas the MDGs only had eight goals, the SDGs have 17, so much larger uh, thematic structure, uh, and 169 targets. And with this larger structure, there's many new areas, such as climate, innovation, economic equality, uh, amongst others. And not only is the entire structure expanded, but the, the water goal the, uh, and targets are also is also much larger, whereas the MDGs focused on WASH, the SDG 6 on water looks at water use efficiency, wastewater, IWRM, transboundary cooperation, uh, amongst other things. So this is a much more comprehensive water goal than what existed for the MDGs. Um, what's also very pertinent for GWP is SDG 17 which is the goal for the means of implementation, which is, as an organization, this is what we do. Um, so you know, when discussing, we'll get into it a little further on, but when discussing the, the SDGPF, um, this is, this is uh, part of our targeted activities will be to utilize the means of implementation to help the achievement of SDG 6 and other water-related targets. Um, and then what's also unique about the SDGs versus the MDGs is these are the, the, the targets will be tailored nationally. And that'll be in terms of both the prioritization of how each country takes on the targets. And then as well, the, the targets, the numbers themselves will also be um, tailored to national priorities. Okay. So what are GWP's links to the SDGs? Um, it, it really needs to be noted that all of our activities as an organization are linked directly or indirectly to the SDGs. You know, we have three strategic goals, policies and practice, knowledge and partnerships. And as you'll notice, these are very much in line with the st structure of the S SDGPF components. Um, the, the now four thematic areas of GWP, climate resilience, transboundary waters, urbanization, and the water, food, energy uh, ecosystems nexus are all very much aligned with the SDG framework. <clears throat> and then the overall motto um, of the SDGs is leave no one behind. And so this very much plays into the cross-cutting theme of youth themes of youth and gender that GWB has. Um, so this is something that we'd also we also want to capture within the SDG PF. So what is the SDG PF? Most of you know this already, but this this is just a you know a brief review. Um, so the SDGPF was launched in early 2016, and it's basically utilizing the country water partnerships to facilitate engagement 
of their partners, your partners, to help national governments create an enabling environment to implement the water-related SDGs. So it's not GWP's task to implement the SDGs per se. That's not our that's not our added value. It's to create that enabling environment to facilitate, to bring together, to create partnerships for the implementation. Um, and that's where this latter part comes in, where it's SDG 17 and the means of implementation, where we can leverage our partnerships to support SDG implementation with national processes related to financing, policy and institutions, monitoring, knowledge and capacity and strengthening partnerships. So those are focuses very much of GWP, but also those are the targets that are found under SDG 17. Um, so we, GWP has started the process with a first group of 16 country water partnerships from 10 of our 13 regions. Um, as you all know, we're in the middle of this design phase of these 16 countries where each of the country water partnerships are developing three-year work plans to engage the partnerships uh, in supporting national level water-related SDG implementation and support to implementation. And the implementation of these three-year work plans, these pr proposals, should begin in early 2017. So to date, uh, the SDGPF was launched earlier this year. Uh, the 16 countries then between March and May developed draft concept notes on the design phase. These were short versions of now what the country water partnerships are doing at present is working on these three-year project documents, which is ongoing. And up until this point, we have six project documents of the 16 that have been submitted from Armenia, Bangladesh, China, Hungary, Indonesia, and Vietnam. So what I'm going to do now is go into the core elements of the design phase and the core elements of the project document that you all, uh, most of you all, are working on. Um, so each of the bullets you see will be a slide, and I've actually added one since the last uh, webinar on uh, the thematic areas. Um, so these are the, the areas that I'll cover. Um, uh, one slide at a time and kind of looking at the questions that the uh, that the project documents should address in each of them. Um, so I'll just jump right into the first one. So the first, the core element is SDG 6 and the water related targets. So the SDG PF is targeted towards SDG 6. Um, but it and so this the question is so how do the how does the project address that address the targets under SDG six so it's not just the six um, you know six point one through six point six but it's also six point A and B which are the means of implementation targets for SDG six so but it's not only SDG six but then how are other water related targets under different goals also addressed in the SDGPF, in the project? Um, you know, what are the impacts on food and health and gender? Um, the, the, some of the project documents we've seen have a very clear connection with some of the other targets besides SDG 6. And you know, as a, a partnership that's trying to reach out to beyond just the water community, this is very important to make these connections and to tie in with other say, minist other ministries outside of, you know, water ministries or the ministries that support water um, and looking at other sectors. Um, and then as well to draw out, you know, I, GWP's primary focus is IWRM. So how does the project SD address SDG target 6.5 in particular? Um, and then it's clear, it's, it's important to clearly then outline what are the ob objectives and activities that support the implementation or the prepared preparation for implementation of the water targets. <clears throat> so as I mentioned before, not only is SDG 6 important, but SDG 17, uh, the means of impl implementation. So what we'd like to see is how does the project utilize the means of implementation to support SDG 6 implementation. 
Um, and you can see the list of, as a, as when, what I had mentioned before about the aspects of SDG 17 that are the bread and butter of, of GWP. Um, how does the project use those five different aspects to support SDG 6 implementation? And then what it should therefore be also clearly uh, stated in, in the document, what are the objectives and activities uh, that support that within the project? Um, and kind of an overarching question of, so how does this project create an enabling environment for water related SDG implementation? How does GWP and how does the SDGPF accomplish that? So links to national governance processes. What's really important that we want to enunciate is we're not trying to create something with the SDGPF that is parallel or a duplication of what's already going on in the country. Um, so we really like to see how the SDGPF is linked to other national governance processes. So to water, whether that's you know, um, policies or policy frameworks or you know, the water code or so we really want to and we want to see that depicted in the document itself to show that what the SDGPF will do will support what is already going on within the countries themselves um, because we don't want to be we don't want to compete with with the, what the national government is doing we want to be able to support what the national government is doing so it'd be great to have those identified within the document itself And then in a similar manner to show all countries, uh, they'll be different in how they how this is expressed, but all countries will have SDG processes that'll have different ministries that are in charge of SDG and SDG 6 implementation. So what we'd like to see in the document as well is that the research has been done, the contacts have been made, so what are the links to the national SDG processes that are ongoing. And this is again, not to duplicate or do something in parallel to what the, what the national government is doing. So it, it's important to highlight what are those links in the activities and objectives um, that are going, ongoing between the project and then other national level processes related to the SDGs. Um, is you know, the country water partnership engaged with the right national government stakeholders to make meaningful contributions to towards SDG implementation. And what could be difficult with this is that some country water partnerships are, have strong relationships with certain ministries, yet those ministries might not be those that are in charge of <clears throat> SDG implementation. So it may take work to build new bridges with other uh, ministries and kind of broaden the, the partnership. Um, so in it, you kind of we can see this as an opportunity to, to place the country water partnerships in a strategic position with national level implementation. The idea of the uh, SDGPF is to support implementation. So this can create a great role for the country water partnership to, to be strategically placed to, to help with that implementation. Um, and then how can the country water partnerships utilize their strengths? to reinforce ongoing uh, <clears throat> efforts to implement the SDGs. Um, also, what we'd like to see is the who are the stakeholders, the key stakeholders that are being targeted for this project. Um, and then specifically, what is their role, uh, what are their roles and responsibilities and contributions that these uh, stakeholders make uh, contribute to the project itself. So that needs to be defined within the project document. Um, and this is especially the case with what national government and or SDG mandated institutions uh, are linked to the project. How are they involved? How are they supporting? Um, how is the project supporting them? Uh, so Nicola will talk about more of this a little later, but in the project document, we'd also like to see what are the potential financing partners. Now this is at the the national and the and the local level. Um, from GWPO, we're going to be putting together a larger global uh, resource mobilization effort 
to get uh, finan- uh, funding to finance the SDGPF and the Country Water Partnerships, but we're also expecting the Country Water Partnerships themselves at the national level to do resource mobilization as well. And so in the project document, we'd like to see, okay, who are those potential financing partners that have been identified and targeted? And also are what uh, possibilities of co-financing have been identified for the project? Um, project goals and objectives. So we'd like to see very clearly what are the goals and objectives and are they clear and well defined and how do they support SDD, SDG implementation or the preparation for implementation and are they supported by concrete activities and this, we'd like to see this outlined very clearly within the project document. Main expected results. So, what are what what what's going to happen as a result of the project? What are the results? Um, and then linking very clearly to to get there, what are the key activities that will need to take place? And then, what is the role of the country water partnership in particular in arriving at these expected results? Um, in the template that was sent out previously, there's going to be a few uh, areas that were not in the original that we're going to ask that you include um, at a later time, or it, probably as soon as I give you feedback. Um, and one of those is beneficiaries. Uh, donors love to see who and how many people uh, are benefiting from the money that they're investing in in the such projects. So we'll, we'll have a, a section that where we would like to see define clearly who are the program's target beneficiaries and why they were selected, how many people, and then how is it they'll be impacted by the project. Um, so this is the, a new slide that I added from, from Friday because what we'd really like to see is, you know, GWP has these four thematic areas and the country water partnerships have activities going on, and these are linked to the SDGs. So how is it that we can tie in the work that's already being done in the country water partnerships to reinforce what's going to be happening with the SDGPF? Um, so it's clear, it would be, you know, we appreciate uh, having uh, it be defined, you know, what aspects of the project are connected to these four um, and how will the project help implement those areas of work. Um, um, I think this is the last slide and this is the back to the motto of leave no one behind. Um, that is kind of the overall SDG uh, motto. Um, so we'd like this to be as well defined and how does the, the project, the, the proposal address this, this motto uh, of the SDGs? What marginalized communities or vulnerable communities and or groups are targeted in the project? And because GWP has a cross-cutting, these cross-cutting themes of youth and gender, we'd really like to see aspects of that in the project itself. Um, so what are the activities and objectives that incorporate these into the project document? And just as a as an information note, um, the gender and water teams in GWPO and myself were in the middle of developing a short uh, kind of guide, if you will, on what types of activities, uh, gender, what types of gender and youth activities can be incorporated into the SDGPF project documents. So hopefully in an, another week or two, we'll be disseminating this to, to everybody. Be very short, it'll be probably two, maybe three pages at the most. Um, that'll give an idea and suggestions for how gender and youth can be incorporated within, within the project documents. All right, so this is where I stop, and now Nicola will t take over for the remainder. Thank you, Josh. Uh, hello, everyone. Um, I will be um, uh, talking briefly about uh, the direction we're taking uh, with resource mobilization, how we are 
you know, planning to support uh, the region and network in their fundraising efforts. Uh, so briefly uh, on this uh, and move on to more specifically how we are planning to support uh, you, uh, the country's developing proposals uh, in your fundraising efforts. Um, as Josh said, it's going to be a joint effort uh, and I'll be talking also a little bit about what we are planning to do at a global level to activate um, as global uh, support uh, and resource mobilization for SDGPF. You can click on the next few um, items to get the full slide. Thank you. So, yes. Um, so right now we are um, trying to really strengthen the resource mobilization function, um, ultimately with a goal uh, of improving our financial sustainability, which is one of the key uh, change agenda areas. And we are planning to do this through um, um, diversified, more diversified funding, uh, as well as maintaining our long-term efforts, long-term funding from traditional sources. Um, there are two different uh, strategies uh, to achieve uh, this objective of diversification of funding, as well as maintaining long-term funding from traditional sources. Uh, one is more an inward type of uh, strategy, which is uh, really very much about strengthening uh, the secretariat as well as the network's capacity in uh, being in a position to develop strategic partnerships and raise funds. Um, the only, you can see the different bullet points and examples of activities underneath. Um, I'll be just kind of saying one word about uh, something that we're starting now, the donors mapping and the power mapping. Uh, at a global level. This is really something that it's a tool that we would like to kickstart to provide uh, regions uh, and countries with a set a foundation of uh, qualified leads, uh, relevant stakeholders from different categories. Um, that's for the donors mapping, uh, which will have a global, regional and country level. For you to take further and, and feed this tool uh, with uh, relevant contacts relationships you have in your markets, as well as a power mapping exercise, which will look at going in more details to understand um, the decision making processes happening with this particular strategic stakeholder. What are their key events and themes uh, and who else in the network is in uh, contact with the stakeholder? So opportunities for joint work or how can you know such other person help you with this particular uh, strategic stakeholder? This is for the power mapping. Um, I will not develop uh, the rest. It's on the slide. Uh, on the right hand side, this is the, the second leg or second pillar of this uh, of this effort to uh, become more financially sustainable uh, and diversify funding. It's basically consisting in uh, raising our profile as a partner. Uh, partnership goes two ways, so we need to be able to be uh, to come across as a more attractive partner, and uh, and and focus even more on uh, donors and partners related communications, as well as the type of added value we bring to different categories of stakeholders. Next slide. So um, just to apply this, um, or how is this strategy going to really apply on SDGPF as such? Um, so here we talk about um, different activities uh, which will enable us at the global level to support your local efforts. So how can we support uh, the local efforts? Uh, next click. Um, and a few more clicks so to have the, the full slide. Um, so the donor mapping tool uh, that I referred to earlier, uh, that we're kickstarting now, um, will be available operational uh, for the network by Q1 next year. Uh, as I said, it's uh, the point is for the regions uh, and the countries to take it further and and, and use and, and kind of feed uh, this tool with additional relevant uh, leads. It will have a clear. Um, um, distinct, you will have a clear uh, uh, distribution by, by our themes, and so you will be able to enter this donor mapping tool uh, via the SDG uh, entry point or another thematic entry point. So already, as far as SDGPF, there will be um, 
a list of uh, qualified uh, leads and prospects for regions and countries to work further on in relation to SDG, as well as other things. We would like also the second bullet point um, is basically to say that we uh, we would like to work closely with the network and, and with the regions and countries in uh, helping them understand uh, the situation analysis. What, what, how is the country uh, landscape looking like in terms of funding? And this um, this can be done by asking ourselves a number of questions, and I've, I've put a few examples. So, for example, what are the key bilateral uh, or multilateral donors that are present in your country? Which are the key uh, water champions? Uh, they could be international organizations or NGOs uh, who uh, we need to really uh, collaborate with or follow because uh, they themselves would help our efforts uh, to position ourselves in front of uh, partners or they are the recipient of big uh, partnerships and big funding. Uh, what are the development themes uh, in terms of, what are the trending development themes in your region? Uh, what what makes your uh, uh, specific uh, context and country uh, unique in, in, in what it is uh, trying to offer? So this will help guide our fundraising efforts at a local level. And I will go back to this um, situation analysis uh, next next slide in a, in a moment. Um, we will also support. Uh, the proposal development, uh, by that we mean the external proposal development that is going to be sent to donors. Uh, and we will basically uh, share best practices, uh, apply a kind of quality check, uh, making sure that some of the sections are clearly well spelled out in the external proposal, um, such as uh, some elements mentioned by uh, Josh in terms of really quantifying and qualifying exactly who are the beneficiaries, how many, why did we select them, uh, how is this project going to be sustainable, how is it really clearly connecting with which SDG and how. Um, so support from that point of view as well in, in your uh, donor's proposal development. Next slide. Um, I wanted to show you um, a couple of examples of um, resources that exist online and that we will uh, share in, in more details with you as we go forward. Um, there's three examples here, um, and I guess you cannot really see in details, uh, um, but on the left side you have uh, an OECD table uh, that, that is valuable for regions to look at um, because it lists uh, the key, the major bilateral agencies uh, according to their investment uh, in development uh, by region. So the table is available across all regions and can tell you uh, who are the most important uh, bilateral agencies investing in development in South Asia, Central Asia, Latin America, etc. So that can already give you a sense of where to focus your efforts as far as this bilateral agency um, uh, segment is concerned. In the middle, um, SDG funders, SDG philanthropy platform, there's many, many uh, interesting, useful resources within that, uh, that website. Um, and here, the example I put is um, a distribution of uh, MDG funding. So uh, when it came to the Millennium uh, Development Goals, exactly which regions received what kind of money from which donor. I mean, this website goes into great lengths and you can really go in very fine details by goal itself to find out exactly who supported the MDG 3, 4, 5 uh, in which region. Uh, on the right hand side, another useful resource, um, uh, this one from uh, the GGGI, uh, the website, the greengrowthknowledge.org, uh, that's part of this organization. And um, you can click on the map on <clears throat> and have access to country uh, level details. Uh, the example here is Armenia. And this will list interesting uh, background context um, uh, elements uh, to, to fuel uh, your proposal development, but it will also give you some leads. Um, on this one, it lists 
relevant sustainable development initiatives that concern this country. Uh, the one there is a poverty um, uh, in an environment initiatives by UNEP um, that is happening across 10 or 15 region, uh, countries. And um, it's, it's a useful link to keep in mind. Uh, UNEP itself has uh, certain donors associated to this program, to this particular initiative. So um, this will also help um, you kind of guide your uh, research efforts in terms of finding um, connections and hooks and potential donors for your proposal. Next slide. We um, also said that uh, there is a global level effort uh, as such uh, to uh, fundraise for the SDGPF. You can continue. And um, we are basically uh, also developing a, a proper proposal at a global level, um, essentially providing potential donors a way to support the project as, as a whole uh, across the 16 countries and more countries when, when we have more. Um, and if needs be, providing them with some kind of soft earmarking across specific countries, but more like a global type of support or offering them some kind of twinning approach. So that could be uh, one northern um, uh, bilateral agency or, or country uh, deciding to twin uh, with a developing country and, and support their efforts to realize the SDGs. Um, a couple of examples were discussed at, uh, at an early stage with a couple of bilateral agencies, and there seems to be some good appetite for this kind of mechanism. So uh, either a global one or sort of a twinning, uh, uh, country by country type of twinning that we could probably support. Um, we are also, of course, in the process of mapping uh, key uh, SDGPF potential prospects, uh, donors, uh, understanding what are the key initiatives we need to be uh, allied and aligned with. Um, and, and prepare ourselves for proactive pitches, uh, as well as, of course, a response to grants. Uh, the five, uh, you, you can find again the five sort of clusters of potential donors that uh, I showed you a couple of slides ago um, that, that are so far the five main uh, categories uh, providing resources to GWPO, even if so far we have received a lot more from bilateral agencies. Um, but certainly all these five are, are worth exploring and will be explored. Um, with a specific mention uh, to uh, add to what Josh was saying, um, the tie-in with um, specific uh, ministries in your country, um, making sure that um, you have really well identified those tie-ins. Um, for example, in the Armenia proposal, there are clear uh, tie-ins with the Ministry of Health, uh, Energy, Natural Resources, uh, Natural Protection, and the Water Agency. So those uh, li links are really explicit, uh, and you can see that there is a, a, a stake for these ministries to enable, um, or to, to uh, at least there is a really well-aligned vision between this proposal and what these ministries are trying to, uh, to achieve. Um, and from the beginning, there has been a focus on the fact that there's going to be a great deal of support at national level. Uh, we expect the national level to provide definitely some funding. Uh, the question will be exactly which um, relevant institution, uh, which local government potentially, or which ministry, or which uh, national agency would be best in a position to support your effort. Um, the other clusters, foundations, private sector, uh, are also very much uh, relevant uh, at a local level as well as a global level. Um, so that's kind of uh, giving you um, a picture of uh, the type of support we're planning to roll out at a global level and uh, as well as how we, we may help your efforts at a local level. All right. Thank you very much, Nicolas. Um, so that's the the end of the presentation. Um, are there any questions that uh, the group would like to ask? I'll open it up now.
Hello, this is Fabiola from Central America. Hello, go ahead, Fabiola. I just have a, a question. Thank you, Josh and, and, and Nicola, for your presentation. Uh, they were really uh, very informative for all these processes that we are developing right now. Um, Josh, you, you said in your presentation that there is an expectation that the proposals or the projects are going to start implement, uh, implementation in early 2017. Uh, I'm just asking this because we are in in, in this uh, process and we are doing it in a participatory way. So, in in order to define with the group of stakeholders that we are working at national level about the following steps, what uh, do we have um, a budget for starting this uh, pro uh, project implementation or um, because I understand that we that this was going to be subject for fundraising, so just to to so you can give me some feedback around this. Yep, thank you, Fabiola. Um, so yeah, I mean, I said early 2017, but this will be different for yeah all the countries. You know, we we hope to have those that have already submitted project documents going in early 2017. But some of them, you know, because like like your processes ongoing in Central America, some will take longer to 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 um, to finish. Uh, so yes, we're in in terms of seed funding to get. Uh, implementation going there we're in the process right now as we speak defining criteria for those that we from GWPO will provide with seed funding there won't be seed funding for all 16 uh, we haven't we don't know how how many country water partnerships will be receiving the seed funding but we're in in the middle right now of, of uh, coming up with the criteria for how we go about selecting those. Um, and then the amount is well at this point is, is uncertain. Uh, but I mean, this is it, it's incentive to make very for good project documents because it, they, it'll be the country you know, will be evaluating based on what we receive. Um, but yes, for a selected amount of uh, a selected number of the the sixteen, there will be seed funding to uh, kickstart the uh, projects. Thank you. Another question: um, Are the proposals already prepared, available uh, somewhere? Sorry for the question. If <laughs> Mm -hmm. yeah. with, the, with, with that information um, could everybody mute their microphones please sorry there's a lot of background interference um, let's see they uh, we're there what we've received are the first drafts so they're very rough right now I would say in in the in the in the near future we'll be we'll feel more comfortable with sharing uh, first drafts so you can see what they look like um though the so we've sent feedback on four of them out of the six and so when we get a next iteration back from those uh i'll feel more comfortable with sharing uh those but they're very raw right now so but yes we'll we'll make those available so uh that you all can learn from from the experiences uh, of that others have had in developing their project documents thank you josh a another question <laughs> Uh, is there? A, I know that uh, the the regional um, timelines we were at least for us we, we didn't comply with them. But is there like a deadline for sending these uh, project proposals? No, there isn't. Uh, there isn't necessarily a deadline. Um, we we understand very much that. Uh, that these processes take time. Uh, in every every out of the sixteen countries, every one is different in the reasons why it's faster or slower or not. Um, so I, I, mean, I know you know for many of I think everybody online, um, they're very much 
far in the process. So I don't know if there we haven't de we haven't defined a, a cutoff date, if you will. Uh, that may become necessary with some of the other country water partnerships that aren't present that are very very far behind. Uh, that we have no information about. There's a few of those, but for but n at this time, no. There's no there's no say cutoff date. Okay, thank you. Kasiyat uh, Musabaeva from Kyrgyzstan. We don't have many questions, but uh, we want. Uh, is it because Kyrgyzstan isn't involved uh, at this program? And is it possible to send your presentations by email? Thank you, Kasiyat, for participating. Yeah, I think you weren't on the call yet when we started, but uh, this entire PowerPoint and the webinar and the presentation will be um, is being recorded. So we're, we're going to put it up either on GWP's YouTube channel, so and we'll set, provide the link so anybody can watch it. Um, I'll also probably early next or later this week send around just the powerpoint itself and then if uh, the youtube isn't a possibility what we'll do is we'll uh, put the uh, file of the of the webinar in a, in a dropbox so people can access it thank you thank you very much for your answer <laughs> Hello. All right. Are there any other questions at this time? Hello. Excuse me. Yeah. I'm from West Africa. Can I go? Yes, please. Okay. Thank you very much. Uh, we have two uh, major. Uh, Concerns. The, the the first one is about the capacity building of the WP network, and this is critical because uh, we need to uh, to have it ahead so that we can uh, support uh, others. And uh, we notice that the regional perspective of the SDGs is not that clear. Where are you from? In, in West Africa. Device. Sorry, Dom, I'm going to... Could people please mute your microphones because there's a lot of background and we can't hear uh, the person who's asking... Dom, who is asking a question. Could you please mute your microphones? Yes. Okay. What I wanted to say is that uh, the SDGs, the commitment globally, are made at national level. Now, the regional organizations that uh, wish to support are not uh, really aware of the processes and uh, uh, even the, the way to, to deal with this. And we need to be strengthen to coordinate this regional uh, perspective. That is why we, we want really to see if you have uh, a timing for this uh, uh, regional, uh, uh, this uh, capacity building uh, issue. And the second one is that we notice that there are uh, few organizations that are do, trying to do the same thing. In West Africa, we have uh, IRC that is uh, uh, accompanying few countries to, and our, our wish is to uh, learn from them, to, to get them uh, uh, synergized with us so that we can uh, be able to to reach uh, the countries, but definitely, as you said, this is a, a complex process because this is uh, uh, each country with its context, and uh, we have to cope with it. But we need really 
this capacity building to be done. And this uh, uh, conference, this seminar is very good, very welcome, and we may have more of them to, to be able to understand better. Okay, th thank you very much, Dam. Um, yeah. I think oh, oh. What, what would be helpful, because it's, it's, what, what, it's hard for us to assess what are the needs of the Country Water Partnership in terms of capacity building within the network to be able to implement the SDGPF. So what would be really helpful for us is for the Country Water Partnership, so they're in the regional, water, the regional coordinators, to inform us of what is needed and then that way we can develop the tools and mechanisms to then uh, you know do more webinars or provide guides or if necessary a workshop um, on how it would be best what would be most helpful uh, for SDGPF implementation so I would very much welcome um, feedback in, with regards to that via email or phone um, so then we can, from GWPO side, design or co-design uh, capacity building mechanisms that will, will help us be successful in SDGPF implementation. Um, with regards to your second question, yes, we're, it, it, it's a, where we're at with SDGPF is, is complicated in certain countries because in certain countries we're ahead of the game and in other countries we're behind um, and some right on. So it's it's uh, it's kind of it's difficult kind of um, you know how how to address each of these, but it's they're very every country is unique uh, in this regard. Um, for those that are you know for those that you see that there's potential competition um, or I, I would see more as an opportunity to collaborate just because GWP we offer the unique. Uh, you know, opportunity where we have ready-made platform, multi-stakeholder platforms and partnerships where we can facilitate bridging across sectors and institution types. Um, so I think it, to, you know, to see what the opportunities are to offer uh, GWP to help support the, the activities that are ongoing um, and to try to bring those into the country water partnerships. Uh, I think it, it's seen as an opportunity to do that. Just to add I, um, on, on this last point, I, I appreciated, uh, Dan, uh, your comment also on uh, IRC, and I, uh, I agree it's um, a little bit also identifying who are the, the key players in your region already active in SDG space. Um, and understanding potential synergies, potential bridges, and uh, opportunities to collaborate. So turn competition into into collaboration opportunities and leads. So um, it's actually a good thing to 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 identify who are the key uh, leading players in your region in that respect. Hello, Josh. Can you hear me? This yes. BWP. Hello. Yes, we can hear you. Okay, uh, Josh, my question is for Nicholas. Is that supposing uh, the, you uh, allocate seed money for certain uh, CWP, what happens uh, if after the seed money has been allocated and that particular CWP is not able to identify additional resources for the project, for the next uh, uh, planning period, what happens then? Good question, thank you. Um, so this is also partly why we are initiating a global uh, level effort to fundraise. Uh, so this is precisely to, to expand on the pool of seed money that we have allocated for next year. So <clears throat> part of the answer uh, is in our global level fundraising efforts, uh, how this could materialize um, of course, this would be guided by the donors' uh, scope and, uh, and, and projects, uh, but we hope, the hope is through these global level efforts is to get some kind of core programmatic uh, support across all countries participating. So again, part of the answer uh, would be uh, in, in our own global level efforts, uh, because they would, uh, we hope, trickle down at some point, at some degree, uh, to the country 
entry level, uh, provided there is core programmatic support. For the rest, um, in such a scenario, um, we are in a, I guess, learning process and development process. So um, it, I don't think we have really established a rule. Uh, we have already kind of decided on a, on a, on a way to proceed with regards to a particular uh, situation like this. But in general, um, it's always wise to give ourselves a good window for fundraising. So when we kickstart a project, usually you would allocate six months uh, for taking this project to potential funders. And, and so as part of our own plans, our, our, your plans uh, to integrate a, a window where you will dedicate efforts to fundraise and, and give yourself enough time mm -hmm. for this. Uh, that's another part of the answer. You need to, to really incorporate this fundraising time in, in your uh, in your planning process uh, and not expect that you will find uh, donors uh, right away. But we will need to get back to you more formally in terms of how do we proceed with the scenario you, you entertain. Okay, uh, my uh, second question is, you see, to, to solicit funds or to access funds, you need a very good proposal, very well written proposal. And at the at the country water partnerships, you see, we most are voluntary workers, and we do not have the capacity also to write that kind of proposal that will act donor funding. So, uh, how to meet that gap? How do I? How do we uh, present a or write or prepare a good proposal for donor? attraction what i uh, also part of what i presented was how we support the network in a general sense we are supporting uh, the network to to strengthen their capacity to write good proposals and and develop and and follow the whole process from a to z from planning down to the proposal development this type of support we do in, in general, or we are going to do more and more in general, uh, with, especially with regions, uh, with the view that they would also support uh, their respective countries. Um, with regards to SDGPF uh, specifically, uh, we will have a specific focus on, on helping regions uh, developing quality proposals. So it's a matter of coordinating well between your region and, uh, and, and the countries. Uh, but the, the idea is to um, empower regions to also be able to have some kind of quality check for you and us helping the region, potentially individual cases, in terms of ensuring that the proposal uh, meets uh, the right uh, criteria. Um, part of the general support on proposal development is also about um, identifying, shortlisting a number of uh, proposal writers and having a kind of roster of good writers that we can tap from. So we will also look into the possibility of using this roster of good writers uh, so that we have a couple of writers available for, for countries uh, if it comes to it. Uh, and another question is, uh, Nicholas, is most of the donors that uh, access by the WPO and also the potential donors for the CWPs, that the same donors, like DFID, DFID funded our work rep project, and DFID also a donor to our government, by the donor to the government. So always we are asked, faced with the question that we are already supporting the government. So yeah, why don't you approach the government? And on the other side, government said you are part of the JWP network. So you should be exploring funding through your uh, GWPO network, not to the government. Excellent. Uh, can I ask which country you are from? Yeah, or Bangladesh, BWP. Yeah, okay. Doctor. Yeah, yeah, sure. Um, that's a very good point. And um, uh, we, part of our global efforts, once again, in uh, beyond SDGPF, is to develop more uh, stronger, more strategic, more organic relationships with bilateral agencies uh, such as uh, the FID and, and others. And where we would like to get to is uh, in a much better coordinated mechanism uh, between the global level and the local level. Um, so we are in the process of mapping out um, where are the key 
local arms of the DFIDs, uh, BMZ, SDC, Danida, SIDA, etc. So to have this kind of mapping, which we kind of more or less know of, but we want to really formally formally get this mapping, and and then have a much more coordinated dialogue with the headquarter, uh, with our colleagues, uh, with our partners uh, in the UK, um, to um, facilitate the relationships and the engagement at a local level, uh, all the while doing that in a coordinated way uh, with the global level. Um, so this is uh, also identified as one of the activities we want to do uh, to expand on funding coming from uh, bilateral agencies. I don't know if it uh, answers your question. Uh, can okay, I think for the time being it's okay. We'll see. Thank you. All right. Are there any other questions? Anybody else? All right, then. Uh, with that, uh, I'd just like to thank everybody for participating. We really appreciate it, and we hope to do more of these in the future. Um, as you know, you know, we've started a little bit slow with the SDGPF, so now we're kind of getting up to speed, and so we have, hope to have more interaction, more webinars, more, more training, more information um, as, time pro as we progress further along uh, the road towards implementation. Um, so, as I mentioned, this is being recorded, so we're, we'll share that uh, in the near future. Um, and if you have any questions, uh, you know how to reach me. And uh, again, thank you very much, uh, and have a great rest of your day. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Rewarding for us. Good talk. I think we communicate with the internet.